My name's Lee Brimble, I'm a car photographer. I do get asked more and more frequently to shoot video. I've shot video now for probably about 10 years. Um, and I think the modern shooter now needs a camera that does both stills and video equally. I currently use a Canon R5 and a Canon R6 uh, with RF lenses. Really impressed with them. Uh, they're super sharp. The AF works brilliantly with them. The, the body's uh, weather sealed, um, very reliable, and I, I just love the colours. I then use a C70 that we mount on my van um, and then we shoot video with that. My name's Stuart Morgan and I've been a filmmaker since 2007. Since purchasing the C70 and R5 combo earlier this year, we're just putting them everywhere. I mean, they can be in the car, on the car, outside the car, tracking the car, and we're constantly switching between camera bodies. The beauty of the small cameras like the R5 is we've been able to fit them in tight spaces for the car internals, and then the C70 is probably more suitable for going you know, on, the, on the rigs and on the bonnet and for the tracking shots. Uh, and then along comes the R5C. And, and to be honest with you, for a camera that's only sort of 30 grams heavier than an R5, it's miraculous really what they've fitted into this body because it's got the functions and features of a full cinema camera. You've got false colour, you've got proper waveforms, you've got all the tools you have in a cinema camera in a tiny body. For car rigging, ideally you need a camera that hasn't got a stabilised sensor. So the R5 and the R6 both have inbuilt IBIS, which is great for handheld, but it's not good for car rigs. They pick up all the vibrations and it causes jello. The R5C hasn't got any IBIS and it's just brilliant for mounting to cars. One of the limitations I'm aware of when using my R5, especially if I'm using it as a B-cam to my C70, is you've got recording limits. As soon as I picked up this and saw the spec that this is limitless recording, it was a real eye-opener for me because just the prospect of using it as a viable B-cam to my C70 is brilliant. Another great feature it's nice to see on the R5C is a timecode port. When we're doing car shoots, it's often three, four cameras, and that's going to be really handy on those multicam shoots when we want to jam sync all the cameras together. And of course, I'm forgetting one of the other features on this camera is the dual ISO. We're getting lovely clean images at ISO 800, but should we need to, we could crank that right up to 3200 and the noise will be really minimal and the image still lovely and clean. This is a tiny camera and to think you can get 12-bit 8K RAW in something this size is quite frankly ridiculous but amazing at the same time and you even get the flexibility of going out of the HDMI port in 10-bit RAW. That is pretty much unbeatable in a package of that size. I would say that the R5C is the first proper hybrid camera. I've been shooting with stills with it all day today and it's just felt like I've been shooting on my R5 all the features are the same and then you just throw a switch and it just feels like I'm using my C70. It is literally two cameras in one. It's really impressed me. I've been blown away by it to be honest. Mm -hmm.